Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 14th. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happen on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. In 1951, United Nations forces recaptured Seoul, Korea during the Korean War. Operation Ripper, also known as the Fourth Battle of Seoul, was a UN operation conceived by the U.S. 8th Army during the Korean War. The operation was intended to destroy as much as possible the Chinese People's Volunteer Army and Korean People's Army forces around the outskirts of Seoul. The operation also aimed to bring UN troops to a 38th parallel and followed along the heels of Operation Killer, an eight-day UN offensive that concluded February 28th to push the PVA-KPA forces north of the Han River. Operation Ripper was preceded by the largest artillery bombardment of the Korean War. The U.S. 25th Infantry Division quickly crossed the Han River and established a bridgehead. Further to the east, the IX Corps reached its first phase line on March 11th. Three days later, the advance proceeded to the next phase line. During the night of the 14th and 15th of March, elements of the ROK 1st Infantry Division and the U.S. 3rd Infantry Division liberated Seoul, marking the fourth and last time the capital changed hands since June of 1950. The PVA-KPA forces were compelled to abandon it when the UN approach to the east of the city threatened them with encirclement. In 1960, the British radio telescope at Jodrell Bank in Cheshire set a new record when it made contact with the American Pioneer 5 satellite at a distance of 407,000 miles. The previous record, around 290,000 miles, was set by the Soviet satellite Lunik 3, which photographed the back of the moon last year. Jodrell made first contact with Pioneer 5 after it went into orbit around the Sun between the paths of Earth and Venus. The American satellite was launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida three days before on March 11th. Shortly after launch, the Jodrell Bank telescope was used for the very first time to give commands to a rocket in space. By pressing a button at Jodrell Bank, the 90-pound payload was separated from the third stage of the launching rocket. The telescope then succeeded in switching off the satellite's main transmitter, which will help conserve its battery power for later in the mission. It is hoped that eventually Jodro Bank will be able to pick up signals from the satellite up to 50 million miles from Earth. This will only be made possible by the very large solar-powered batteries on board which run the transmitter. The solar paddles projecting from the satellite will recharge the batteries using the sun's radiation, but the current will still need to be conserved if it is to last until July as it was planned. The transmitter was switched on for no more than 45 minutes a day at first. Later transmitting time will be reduced to 5 minutes per day. Within a week, the satellite will be more than a million miles from Earth and its more powerful 150-watt transmitter will have to be switched on by command from Jodrell Bank. The U.S. astronaut Norman Thagard became the first American to enter space aboard a Russian rocket in 1995. He and two cosmonauts blasted off aboard a Soyuz rocket headed for the Mir space station. It was the end of the old way in space and the beginning of the new. Norm Thagard's NASA One mission was all about learning. He symbolized the fledgling shuttle Mir program as he launched from Kazakhstan on a Soyuz rocket with his commander Vladimir Dezirov and flight commander Gennady Strekolov. They were on their way to spend 115 days in orbit and begin America's experience on Mir. Thagard's personal objectives were to learn how the Russians did long-duration spaceflight and to be a cosmonaut and fly as a crew member on a Russian crew. Shuttle Mir program manager Frank Culbertson would later say that Thagard's stay on board Mir was the hardest of the seven American flights. This was largely because Thagard was the first and almost everything was new for everyone involved. He was very well qualified for his own Herculean labors of learning, yet in several ways he launched underprepared for the aspects of this mission. He had had only one year of intensive training and that training took place under a Russian pedagogical system within the Russian culture and in the Russian language. Also his onboard scientific investigations had to quickly be designed and assembled and Thagard was often learning the Russian protocols as they were being worked out. Furthermore, this important Spectre science module arrived late in flight, and so, as Thagard faced his many challenges, he also met one problem that few had expected. He did not have enough meaningful work to do. This created kind of a slow torture for a perpetual motion astronaut. 
Nonetheless, Thagard's overall success opened the door wide for the next six American Mirror residents. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast for March 14th. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you today to the following websites for the information regarding the topics. ThePeople'sHistory.com Operation Ripper at wikipedia.org The Jodrell Bank Radio Telescope at news.bbc.co.uk And Norman Thaggard on history.nasa.gov The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed the information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing, as this will help keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.